Ich würde sehr gerne auf Deutsch zu Ihnen sprechen und weiß, dass ich, ich äh, es sollte. Beschämendererweise muss ich jedoch zugeben, dass mein Deutsch dafür nicht gut genug ist. Äh, es ist allerdings, was für Sie spricht, ein Trost zu wissen, dass viele von Ihnen mein Englisch verstehen werden. Äh, alle anderen bitte ich um Entschuldigung und hoffe, dass Sie nicht weg äh, wandern werden, während ich für kurze Zeiten einer unverständlichen Sprache zu Ihnen rede. Speakers Corner in London's Hyde Park is a wonderful institution, known all over the world. But actually, it's a rather unlovely space. It's covered with tarmac. It's not as grand as the space we're occupying here today. But it comes alive on a Sunday afternoon when people gather to speak about the things that really matter to them as they've gathered for 150 years. They talk about religion, they talk about culture, they talk about politics, they talk about exciting, crazy ideas, they bring brilliant insights to bear about the world in which we live, they express unpopular opinions, sometimes unpleasant opinions, but they celebrate, they come there to celebrate their right to free speech and to free expression. And often they talk about the struggle for freedom that we enjoy in Germany and in the UK and elsewhere, but millions of people throughout the world still struggle for. And what makes Speaker's Corner in Hyde Park particularly special is the way that it's used to celebrate and exercise our rights and freedoms, particularly from people from outside the UK, from overseas, and particularly among them, for those who, if they were speaking their minds in their country of origin, would be risking arrest or worse. We're lucky to live in a democracy. Millions of people don't. But we need to remember, I think, that our rights and our freedoms were never handed down to us by benevolent dictators or by political elites. They were always won after generations of struggle in Britain, in Germany, and elsewhere. Generations of struggle and sacrifices made by the people who went before us, who won the freedoms that we enjoy, but they perhaps never uh, exercised themselves. Uh, freedom has been celebrated at Hyde Park since the 19th century. That speaker's corner is the consequence of the struggle of working people in Britain, hundreds of thousands of whom used to come to gather in that space to campaign for the vote, for decent housing, for working conditions, for ordinary men and women. And that's why the Speaker's Corner is there now. And today we're celebrating another world-changing moment in 1989, on the 9th of November, when people broke the wall down. We talk about the fall of the wall. Actually, the, the wall didn't fall by itself. People broke the wall down. And millions of people burst out of the tyranny that had denied them the right to free expression. It's wonderful, really, to be able to bring these two global emblems of freedom together today, Speaker's Corner and the fall of the wall. And it's uh, my hope that if enough people are inspired by what happens here today, that perhaps some of you might begin to think, isn't it time that Berlin had its own permanent speaker's corner in the heart of your democracy? That would be a wonderful thing. And it's wonderful too to be able to work with Google and with the Center for Political uh, Beauty on this initiative. I spent 20 years uh, in politics in the UK. If I'd known about the Center for Beauty, uh, when I was an MP, I might not look the way I do today. It's wonderful uh, to be involved with, with, with Google, with its enormous capacity uh, and commitment to promote freedom of expression on a global basis. We know there are challenges in repressive regimes, but we know too that the internet is unstoppable, an unstoppable vehicle for that irrepressible urge for freedom. And we've seen it in the, in the Arab Spring. It's doubtful that the events that we've seen across uh, the Arab world could have happened in the way that they did and at the time they did had it not been for the internet, which helped people spread ideas, 
gain the confidence that they were not the only people who thought them, that there would be strength in numbers if they came out to campaign for their freedom. But that's the important thing, that the internet was the pre prelude to action. Because change was won when people came out onto the streets as they did in Berlin and elsewhere in 1989. When people came out into the squares, onto the streets, to stand shoulder to shoulder in common cause with a common purpose, which was freedom. Now, we don't know how the Arab Spring, how those revolutions will end. But we do know that so long as people are talking to each other, sharing ideas, finding agreement, and where there is no agreement, agreeing to differ, so long as they are doing those things, there is hope that democracy will take root and flourish in, in those Arab countries. I want to end, though, uh, with something of a challenge. If we forget the struggles for freedom that we've had in, in Britain, in Germany, and elsewhere, if we forget that struggle, then a new struggle begins. And that is a struggle to preserve, to protect, to defend our freedoms from those who would take them away from us. It's become fashionable in my country, and no doubt here, to denigrate our political system and our politicians. But this is the best democracy, is the best system that we men and women have been able to devise over the millennia. For all its flaws and its deficiencies, it's the best that we have. But it is only as good as we collectively, we together make it. Each one of us has a role. Each one of us perhaps has a duty because our rights are like muscles. In a democracy, it isn't enough to have those rights, you have to exercise them. If you don't exercise them, they become like muscles, they become weak and flabby, and perhaps when you need them, they may not perform for you. Uh, I want to end by quoting the great Athenian statesman Pericles, who stood in the agora, the marketplace for ideas, for democracy, as well as for goods and services in ancient Athens. He stood in the agora and he told his, he defined for his fellow Athenians the nature of that city's democracy. He talked about the rights of citizens. He talked about the importance of deliberation and debate in reaching wise decisions on public affairs. And then he said, unlike people of other nations, Athenians regard those who take no part in civic duties, not as unambitious, but as useless as useless. And the Greeks had a word for it. They had a word for people who did not participate uh, in their community, in their society, who did not acknowledge their rights and their roles as citizens. That word was idiot. Idiot. So, uh, as it always has been, democracy begins out here in, in the open air with ideas, with exchange, with debate and discussion. It's enriching, it's empowering, it's invigorating, as I hope it will be for the rest of today, and I hope it's enjoyable, not just to speak, but to listen to. And the best way, in my view, to honor those who broke down the wall is to exercise the freedoms that they won for us and to commit ourselves to keep seeking out those walls, whatever they're made of, wherever they are, and keep knocking them down. That's what we're here to do today. Also, vielen Dank für Ihre Geduld und jetzt bin ich an der Reihe anderen beim Deutsch sprechen zuzuhören. Danke.